my name is Raymond Lo. So at Meta, we build an augmented reality headset that will change the way you see. And for the last 10 years, I've been working on eyeglasses, but it's not the eyeglasses you wear today, but it's a digital form of it. And I want to bring everyone here through this journey today and see what we can do with this. The first thing I think we all notice is for the last hundreds to almost millions of years, we still look like this. We haven't changed too much. We still have two eyes. I haven't seen anyone with the third one, maybe. Uh, but we still have two arms. The evolution seems like we never evolve compared to the speed of technology that we're evolving today. If you look at the last 50 years, it's almost like we have a room-sized computer that will fit within your iPhone today, well, maybe just any cell phone. And given all this, humans are really good at one thing. We're good at adapting. We're good at acquiring tools, tools that will make you stronger. But if you look at the tool today we're using, we feel like we're or hunched down to a computer. What if the tool now actually can bring value to your eye in 3Ds? Imagine now, instead of learning from a 2D whiteboard, you can project, let's say, information to your eye directly. And here, what you see is called a glass brain project. And it shows you all the intricate connection for the neurons firing, and with Meta, you can see all this detail, otherwise not possible to see. So, of course, if you think about the human, our eye is the best sensor of a kind for your body. We have millions, millions of sensors on your retina to help you to see color, to see the brightness. Imagine you blindfold yourself today. I don't think anyone can easily get out from this door. And if this is the best sensor of a kind, how much better could it get? The funniest thing I'll say is, if you look at the human eye, what we can see is only very narrow spectrum. From this spectrum of the color you can see, I'll guarantee your dog and cat can see more than you, even today. But our evolution, I don't think in the next 50, 20 years, you can see into the X-ray, you can see into the radio. But the technology today, we do see X-ray that help you to diagnostic on the cancers. You see radio, your phone pick up the radio, and helping you to communicate. What if all this can be advanced and what we can advance on? First thing I think, Personally, right now, this light is blinding me. I cannot see you almost because the bright sun or the bright light on my eye, our eye is extremely limited with the dynamic range. So on your cell phone today, you may all notice one feature called HDR, high dynamic range. What the computer can do now is they can take multiple shots of the same subject matter and then create a much more rich dynamic range. But I don't think you can do that with your eye. Today, everyone wears glasses for very simple purposes, either for safety, corrective, so allow you to focus so you can read, magnification, so you can see a bit better, getting a bit more resolution out from it. Or some of you just wear it for the look, which I do that sometimes. But if we put a digital form, imagine now the computer is on your eye. This, what you see is an example of my professor, actually, Steve Mann. He built this prototype about 40 years ago. So this is actually in the early 90s. So you may all find it really funny. But just look at the cell phone you had in the beginning. It looks really funny as well. So this is the MIT Media Lab. People trying to understand what if you have computer on your body. But most importantly, they're trying to put the computer on your eye. 
And on this side, you can see that is my professor, Steve Mann, who often refer as the father of wearable. I'll give you a story. So when I first met him, he actually looked like this. This is the actual glasses he wear in everyday life. So when he, work, like he walked into the class, I was learning, I was a student. He said that you can have your exam open book, open to the computer, but not open to the internet. OK, so he told me, I can catch you if you're cheating, because my eyeglasses can detect Wi-Fi. That moment, I was like, oh my god. Right? So how is it possible? Because in an analog way, it's very hard for us to imagine that your glasses can see the unseen. So from there, I start the journey, that 10 years of Prototyping. Prototyping is the way to learn. First problem I try to solve is this problem, the dynamic range. I would like to have an eyeglasses can see so well. It may look a bit funny here, but see into the brightest object, which is tick welding, and seeing the background at the same time. So with this, you can see the glasses has the camera situated exactly position as your eye. And here's what it can do with it. If you all weld, you know that with the analog shade, you only see the bright dot and nothing else. You feel like you're working in the dark. In a dark dot, it's very dangerous because you're playing with very high voltage and currents. And with this digital form, we can now create guidance you can teach people how to weld. You can make people to see much, much more. And with this, we figure, hmm, what else can we do? What else would I want to see if I have a way to compute information in real time? So Steve and I work closely, and he, he envisioned that we can also visualize all radio waves. So imagine you hold up your cell phone now. How many times are you trying to find the actual hotspot? But you've been walking around like this, like, OK, I get a bit better signal, worse signal. But with these glasses, now you can visualize where the radio is coming from, so you can get the best reception. And guess what? The best way to hold the phone is not like this, but like this. Because I learned that the antenna is coming from this back of the phone. And I know that what will make the phone more effective. So being seeing the unseen is very fun, actually. We actually created and a prototype to see depth. So imagine now you can resort things about like this far, but give you millimeter accuracy. From there, I built the first prototype called Meta. I walk around with it proudly. So here, what you see is a notable scientist, uh, Gordon Bell. He'd been wearing cameras for decades. But the moment he put it on, you can see that big smile. He was shocked. It's like, wow, this allowed me to see much better. That's impossible, even with his analog glasses. He can actually can now see exactly how far things are. And he couldn't in the past. And I think we all know, even if it's a great idea, it's worth sharing. We start doing this on the street. I was doing demonstration, getting more people to try it. And everyone starts to tell me, Ray, I really want to have this. Can I buy this? And I was thinking, hmm, maybe we should sell this. That brings us to Meta One. We're thinking about now, if you can bring all the digital content that live around us into the real world, what can we do now? Imagine you do 3D printing. You can now preview exactly the size of it before you put it into the printer. Think about the digital and the real world are now truly connected. And what can we do with this? The important thing is by shipping, I'll say, Product, right? We learn a lot. So when I ship this product, it's nowhere near perfect, but we learn one thing. 
the customer start to know what they need and what they want. Everyone comes to me and say, I want better resolution. I want better field to field. I want to make it see more naturally for my eye, so it's not constraining. It brings us to what we are shipping soon today, the Meta 2. You can see a dramatic change in the design. One thing you notice is the optical engine. So what you see right under the brows is a single piece, semi-transparent visor. And that has all the optical elements to project information to your eye. And most importantly is you can still make eye contact. And you can see the beautiful face of our designer. This is actually our industrial designer, Martin. And when we think about the problem we're trying to solve is the few to few. If you or anyone try glasses in the market today, most of them look like a small rectangle that you can look through. But what we're interested in is having that immersion. We learned that it's actually very important because if you have a small field area, it loses the illusion. It feels like that the content disappears in front of you. And with Meta, we achieve the bigger rectangle that you see and give you the sense of presence. And the important thing is this. You know, we have very wide peripheral vision. So we can see almost here if you put your hand out. And by designing the optics around our eye, we learned that now we can achieve a lot of almost impossible tasks in the past with these glasses. So let's dream a little bit what the possibility are there. But it will be the reality very soon. One thing we learn is by wearing glasses, now you turn your whole body as the input. You're thinking about your brain as what you need to program on. You want to give you a sense of present, right? You want to touch things. That's what babies do when they're young, right? That's the best way for you to learn. Now imagine all the digital content. You can interact directly with your hand. We call it the neuroscience interface. So it actually works with your brain instead of alienating us like using an iPad that you have to look away. And the most importantly is you can engage them as if they're a real physical object, and you can program them to work the specific way you like. Imagine an architecture firm. You want to show your customer what you're building. What's the best way you can do it now is using 3D models. And it takes a long time to build. What if now, by wearing the glasses, you can demonstrate exactly how big things are, or give them a sense of the space and understanding what you're getting? That will change the way we communicate and collaborate. For education, I think all of us knows learning from a textbook in a 2D abstract way is really difficult. And if you are medical students, you know that to learn through the human body is a lot and a lot and a lot of work. What if you can see everything, your vein, your nerve system, all in true size, and overlay it directly on top of it? That will make people engage much quicker and having a sense of spatial. And this is very important for a lot of us because that's what our brain does. For shopping, um, I think the number one problem for shopping today is you don't know what you're getting when you're shopping online. You just see a picture or presentation of it. What if you actually can have the object in the real world, and you see it, and you can put it on? Imagine you're getting the shoe. Now you can fit it on, see if it fits. And for girls getting bags, I think that would save you a lot of time, possibly. And for designer, I think with these glasses, we can create objects in space much more freely. Because now you can create without thinking about the cost of the material. You don't have to get clay. You can just draw and create in space. I asked a lot of artists. A lot of time they spend is to understand how to project this 3D information 
back to the 2D world using perspective. But now what if the whole world is your canvas and you can draw on? And lastly, I think for communications, well, we all travelers here. We know how hard it is to, you know, separate from your family. So my, I live in California, San Mateo. My family is in Toronto, Canada. And my brother is in Boston. Having that family time is so difficult because just physically it's hard for us to travel. We can think about future of communication is we now can have a telepresence. Because with the advance of 3D sensing, you can see that very soon I can be in a space seamlessly as if I was there. What you can do more is you can even collaborate. So I can pass around 3D objects from each other and creating you know, collaboration seamlessly. So in the next couple minutes, I'm going to take a look at there because I will show you the meta two. And give me a one minute. Yes. Okay. 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 So this is the first time that he's going to be doing a demo on stage. So if it works. Let's all applause, and if it doesn't, well, we'll just smile and... <laughs> but I'm sure it will, because you give so much importance to demo. So, I guess a lucky day for everyone here today. So I do have a demo. So here, let me demonstrate... Oh, man, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> Demonstrating how I can interact with these 3D objects with my bare hand. Look at the accuracy I can get. I can touch individual one the way I want it. Right? And I can move two hands and move it around and even scale it as if I wanted to. Whoa. All right. Well, thank you. Remember the glass brain project? Now I'm the expert for a second because I can reach out and learn much more about the brain. And for people who want to do education, that's the best way to learn. That's the best way now you can engage with the content. And most importantly is, if all of you here wearing these glasses today, you can also see what I'm seeing. And seeing a, the world that's unseen right now, all the digital content can be lived around us. And at Meta, we build the most natural machine for your brain, for your body. And we hope that everyone here will join us in this journey and make this the future of the computing. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Very good. So, uh, thank you very much. Do you want to answer any questions? Yeah, any questions? Oh my god, it worked. <laughs> First time. All right. Yes. All right, it's available pre-ordered today. You can go onto the website. Uh, it's at about $1,000. And it will be shipping most likely sometime next year, early next year. And you can actually come to the headquarter for trying it. Yes. Hi. I am from Canada, so thank you for representing our country. Go, That's good. Uh, go Maple Leafs. Uh, so the question I have is, as with any of these technologies, you know, HoloLens, Magic Leap, the most important ecosystem support are the developers because they're going to make your applications and make it scalable. So how do you plan on engaging the developers and get them to you know, 
work on your platform as opposed to something else? What we're shipping today is a developer kit. So we're encouraging developer to give it a try and create new application. Our goal in Meta is create an ecosystem together. Uh, we humbly say, please join us for that reason. Great, thanks. Yep. How do you see your product in 10 years? How small will it be? All right, so it's hollow tomorrow. So let me say it the tomorrow way. It will be a strip of glass. It will be a glass that you wear every day, you forgot. Just look at the cell phone industry in the last 10 years. This is what we're heading. We will have interface just with you. That's how we see it. And that's my promise for you. I'm going to spend my next 10 years on this, too. <laughs> So, so now, th this is a really nice demonstration, but still you use a cable here, right? So you're attached right. somehow, somewhere. Is going to be in the future possible to remove that cable? So I think you say, what should I do with the cable? The cable is there because I want to have people to develop on this, because we don't have to think about compute power limitations. You just want to make your life easier, so that you have limited possibility of what you can acquire today. I can see in a couple of years, four or five years later, the compute will be so much faster that this can be miniaturized. But today is to enable people to use it immediately. That's why we keep the cable. Who do you think will be the first early adopters of your product, like in a bigger scale? I want to say everyone here is our early adopters. <laughs> because if you believe in the technology, everyone should get a copy of this and use it. More business side, I would say, um, right now we sponsoring a lot of developers, even the smaller groups. They actually trying to turn this into a business model for themselves. And one example is if you look into uh, virtual reality, they do have the same idea of having developers to create platforms. And this is how they create an application ecosystem. And uh, as we meta, we build the best interface. We create a platform for you to explore. And that's how we do it. And you should join us. <laughs> and you'll be one of them. Um, so you are in, uh, mentioning and building a community and having developers join and enrich your product. I want to ask on the sense, is this will be open source, open hardware as well? To what? Access to what will people in general have when they own your right. device, or will you be locked like in yes. Android or Mac right. and stuff? So let me maybe repeat. So you're thinking how open we are to the hardware and software, uh, how hackable it is, yeah. literally. Uh, well, take it apart when you get it. The software is open source to um, the C++, so you get all the interface API you need. Uh, but if you need more access, we do provide our partners even deeper access. Uh, really depend on your needs. Uh, as a startup, we have hundreds of us in Meta. Uh, we'll try our best to answer your questions. Maybe we should have a follow-up. Yep. Um, Street Camera Flight cameras are not uh, yet very high resolution. Yes. Right. Uh, very good question. Um, yes, it's hackable, right. Uh, I'm welcome to hear what opportunities are there to using haptic feedback and using controllers. These are open to everyone as a new platform. Uh, but I believe that um, we want to reduce the learning curve. We want to make things a little more seamlessly. That's why we're using this time of flight. Because you don't want to have any controller with you all the time. Your hand is the best input of a kind. And that's why we choose this. Okay, we have time for one more question, and okay. then I'll have to. One last question. Don't be shy. What do you need? What do you need? No, sorry. What do you need now? And, and uh, you need money, you need research, you need time, you need to sell. What do you need? Uh, and how much can you produce next year? Well, I think I need all of the above. Uh, but the key is we need to innovate. I think the reason I'm here is I want to have people to believe this is the platform to innovate on. 
It's a platform that will change everyone's life in a good way. Because this is the first computer you design for your eye, your brain, for your sensory. But not something I'll adapt back. Finally, it adapt back to me. That's what I think what we need. We need a lot of innovation. And if you're interested in investment, we should talk at the back as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Raymond. Thank you.